Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today we're giving you all our tips and tricks on how to spray using a paint gun. So here's our piece of pegboard and you probably can't see this on camera, but one side is coated just with a clear coat to protect it and seal it. And we're gonna be painting the other side. So this is a piece of either 5 8 or 3 quarter inch MDF. You could use plywood and whatever wood you want. I like MDF for this. You um, take whatever size doweling you have. You figure out your drill size. This is half inch doweling. And then you, we set up a grid on here of all the holes. We've drilled all these holes using a drill press so they're straight and they're all the same depth. And then you simply cut your doweling to whatever length you want. I think these are eight inches. And you push them into place wherever you feel like, whether it's here, here, and here, and, and here. And then you can set your piece on here, whatever weird shape it is, or a square shape, or a small space, and you can spray it. And when you spray, instead of any overspray coming down and hitting the table and hitting your work when it's down low, it sits up high, the overspray will go down. If you're in a spray booth, it goes that way. If you're not in a spray booth, hopefully it just goes down and stays there. And then what we also do is we take a piece of craft paper before you put these in, and you wrap this in craft paper, tape it on the back so all the holes are covered. And then you can feel all the holes with your fingers. You pick the hole you want, push it through the paper. That keeps the rest of this all clean, no overspray. And then next time, if you want a different size uh, setup, you lift these out, put a piece of tape over those holes. You're trying to keep this clean in here. And then you can reuse new holes. And as long as you keep it covered and keep taping up the old holes, you can just keep reusing this over and over. But you can see a few places where we didn't tape it up and the overspray got in there. They might be a little tight now to put the rod back in. And as you spray more, that can really build up and then you've lost that hole. If you know the size you always want to use, you don't have to drill all these holes. You drill the four holes where you want them, say these four right here, and you only drill four holes. And you can leave these in or you can glue them in and you're ready to go. Multiple holes makes it that much more flexible It makes it com convenient to use. This has a lot of convenience, there's a lot of holes. You can make this piece any size you want. If you're spraying a big door, you may want this a lot longer right. and four corner pieces. Yeah, and by the time you set that up to drill press four holes, you might as well do a you grid are. like you've done. Now on the top of this, I usually take masking tape and I, and I lay it over the top and down the sides because as you spray more and more and more, you can build up overspray on here and then you either have to throw these away because they're too dirty or you can peel the tape off and keep these clean if you want. And on the top of these, if you lay tape over here, a couple pieces of tape, it keeps this softer so it doesn't scratch your wood. You can also sand the edges of these a little bit so they're rounded, they're not sharp. But my favorite is you take the little tiny, uh, the little tiny silicone bumpers you can buy to put on doors and things, like your cupboard doors to close, and you push a little silicone bumper on the top of these four, and now you're putting your door or your panel onto a nice soft surface and it won't scratch it. So that's it. You can, make, you can make these any length, any size. You can use big doweling, small doweling. I've made these with an old wooden broomstick where you do big one inch holes. And you cut the broomstick into four pieces and you're really, really solid uh, spray stand for doing heavier doors and things. Awesome. For lightweight work, these are fine. Thanks so much for those tips. The paint we're using is Satin Breakthrough in the color Van Corten Blue. HC145. Benjamin more color. This lid has been on for a while, so it's a little difficult to open. If I had a real paint opener, it would be better. They're different from a screwdriver. They have a little lip on them, so they pry mm -hmm. better. I can sure. get it for you. Yeah. This okay, let's just pause this while I go to get the uh, paint opener. So here's the difference between a paint opener and just a screwdriver. It has a hook, which helps you leverage the paint can to open it. So. Let's see if it works any better. With any other can, the uh, screwdriver would have been just fine. But this is pretty sealed. It's really sealed. Opening this can is like watching paint dry. Oh, it's rusted. It's a problem with the cheaper metals they use now. They rust easily. Do we have a can that we can transfer this to? Uh, we're going to strain what we're going to use. Yeah, we may have to find a new can for this or a new pot, at least. 
Oh yeah, the paint looks pretty good. There you go, you can see the paint's in there. Put together a good stir, and then we're gonna use a good paint strainer. Use paint strainer, but if you rinse them, you can use them over and over and over. You don't have to just throw it away. Stir stick here. Sometimes you can take an old can to your paint store and if they're nice, they'll shake it for you. It's been sitting a long time. Now we'll put it into a, strain it into another container. Just from my experience, I know how thin it has to be to go through the cup gun. So if it won't go through the strainer, it's sure not gonna go through the cup gun. So I'm gonna strain a little bit of it to start with. And we're just pouring right out of the can. We're not worried about getting the can dirty because we're gonna replace it. So. That's coming through and it's not too bad. Could be slightly thinner. So what we'll do is um, we'll strain it into here and then I may add a little bit of touch more water and then we'll strain it back into the cup gun. See, it's coming through. So it's a really warm day and we really wanna make sure this flows out well. It's just slightly thick. So I'm gonna water it just slightly. Might just be like two ounces, one in there. Stir it up well. Also, if it's too thick coming out of your cup gun, even with a large tip on the gun, it will come out really rough. It won't atomize properly with the air. I want this to flow nice, maybe just a touch more. It's looking pretty good. That's good. Now, would you suggest that um, we restrain it again? When I think it goes I will. This just takes a little tiny bit of dirt or dust or a little bit of skinned over paint or anything in here uh, in your gun, and you can see how small the tip is 1.8 tip. If it gets clogged in there, it's going to stop spraying. So, better to be safe than sorry. Right, so, let's get into the cup gun. When you roll, you use a little, actually a fair amount of paint because your roller sucks up so much paint. When you spray, you get about an overspray with a good HVLP gun. You don't lose too much. Should have gloves on. I can get you some. I can need some. There's some over there. But in the meantime. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to grab you some gloves. When you're using a small compressor like this, it naturally, especially if it's humid out, it will create water in the tank. You want as least amount of water coming out of your line as possible. So you can buy a little. Um, you can buy a little uh, filter, water filter, to put onto this line to reduce the water. We don't have that, but these, they have a little valve in the bottom. And if you open that, it's at the lowest part of the tank. It will let, if there's any water in here, to let the water out. And a little bit of air will come with it. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna set this to see if any water comes out. It'll spray out. And then we're going to tip the compressor a little bit. That's the lowest point. You can see a little bit of there. Look at the water coming out. And that's also been sitting in your tank, and you can see it's dirty, so it's kind of rusting the inside of the tank. People forget to clean these, but People these like us. <laughs> these tanks aren't painted, and instead they tend to rust out anyways. But you can get that moisture out of there. Wow, there's quite a lot in there. Yeah. So would you suggest that people do this every time? You're really use supposed it? to do it every time you use your compressor. Okay. But so. this is a pretty old compressor. It's year, probably 10 years old. So but that's not the best to have that coming out of your compressor. So this is our pegboard base spray pegboard for spraying that we made. And these are going to fit into these holes for us to spray on. Uh, to keep this clean, we're simply going to take a piece of Paper. Now we're going to cut it a little bit bigger. And a piece. I'm going to wrap this. Now, flip it back over. And now through this paper, you can feel where the holes are. You can even see them when you push down on the paper. So you want to be smaller than this. So now we piece. want to be smaller than this. We want to be in a little bit. So maybe I'll try right about there. 
and you, this is thin paper, so we can just push right through it, and a little piece of paper will just go in the hole. Let's try this spot here. See this big? I have all paint on that end, so we're going to use the clean end. Fits in better. And maybe we'll go right here. Right there. There's our four pegs. In this case, this is a little bit sharp still too. I didn't sand them very smooth. So I'm just going to wrap them in tape. And that'll keep the overspray off of here. So it'll last a little bit longer. You don't have to replace your doweling as often this way. So now we'll be able to set this on here and we'll be able to spray it. And then once you spray it, because we have holes in this, you might want to lift this off, put it on a clean surface because a little bit of paint's going to come through the holes on the here. If it shifts, it's going to put paint on the back here. So. So a lot of these products like the MDF, MDO boards, they tend to have sometimes a little bit of wax or release agent on them from the manufacturer. So I always give them a little sand. If you have a machine, you can do a little orbital sand on them. And it helps the paint stick a little bit better. This is just a fine sandpaper. It's about a 220 grit. I don't want to see scratches under my final paint. When you do blow anything off, nice and clean but when you spray something with air you're actually creating static electricity which means when you paint it any dust in the air will be attracted to that finish and you could have dust in your finish so just a light little wipe with a damp cloth will reduce that static you can take a little spare old sock I like to use for wiping and this is spray just a, just light a little bit a little tiny bit of water on there and give it a wipe and now I've reduced all my static ready for paint. So I've actually never used a paint gun before so my husband is going to explain to me how to do it. He's going to demonstrate on a piece of board so and then a scrap board just for a trial. Yeah then I'm actually going to go to it and see if I can paint this one. When you're spraying with at least this cup gun if you adjust this knob it it lets the trigger come back more if you turn it out and less when it goes in so if you're worried about too much paint going on in your job, you can turn this in a bit and your trigger just stays from coming back so far. So you have less paint comes out because it keeps the tip from coming back so far. Then this top one is how big the fan is. So the fan can be tiny like this for painting something small all the way up to about six inches. So typically if you take your hand, about the width of your hand, say six inches away, you typically want about a six inch paintbrush. So around here, it should be about that big of a spray. And we'll just spray a little bit and you can see what happens. Can you, I don't know if you can see that. See how small that is? Yeah. How big that is. Now when you pull the trigger on a cup gun, there's two positions. The first one is simply air coming out. It keeps the tip clean and you can blow stuff off with it too. That keeps your tip clean. And then when you go a little bit further after that, paint comes out. So the point of painting, the same with, with a little spray can when you're using it, you don't want to stop at this edge and have it build up and go back and forth or else the edges will have so much paint, the center won't have very much. So if you're not good at triggering on and off with the paint, then you're better to come right off the end and right back and right back. But if you practice on, on spraying cardboard or scrap wood and you trigger, by triggering I mean we're gonna have the air running all the time but then the paint's only going to come out part of the time. So as you come to the edge, when you pull the trigger, I'll just do it quickly. One first setting, it's just air coming out. And then when you go further, the paint starts coming out. So the point of that air coming out is to keep the nozzle clean so it doesn't dry up and start spitting. So when you come across a piece of work, as you come across, it's painting. When you get to the end, you let the trigger out go just to the point where the air is coming out to keep it clean. Then as you come back, you pull a little further and the paint comes out and you just continually do that back and forth. If you don't get good at practicing triggering, uh, you can simply 
come across the board, as long as you come off the end each time you come back. If you come like this and you stop here and you go back, you're building up paint here and here and you're gonna have pools of paint. It'll be dry in the middle and wet on the sides. So it's the same even using a spray can. You, even if you don't want it stop and start, it just make sure you come all the way off the end, not paint like this. You're off the end, off the end, so you get an even post all the way across. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a try. You're gonna give it a try. Now the orientation of the gun, when you are spraying and it's coming out six inches and up six inches, and that's your paintbrush out here. If you have the gun tilted on an angle, you're only painting with that little bit bottom of the paintbrush and the top is blowing out in the air. You really need this perpendicular to your surface. So when you're spraying, your paintbrush is straight. Not like this and not tip right over. You want it perpendicular, straight up and down. Just like that. Not like that. Okay, so let's see if I can do that. Okay, so oh, I'm going to... And one thing I forgot, and when you spray, it's just like a paintbrush. You don't you overlap by about half the width of the brush each time so that you don't have dry spots in there. I'm going to press the trigger so that I get air. Now I'm going to move and pull it down. So here's a critique on what I did. Um, first of all, I tended to wave the gun as I came off instead of that. Instead of back and forth. There's a lot of body movement. Right. So you have to actually get your whole body into it. Another thing that I could have done better was you can see sort of that stripe there. That's where my husband finished and I should have overlapped and then continued upwards. And then the last bit of critique here is that I did not do another pass off the board. So you want to sort of be half on the board and half off just to get the final edge. Yeah. But other than that, not bad for my first try. So what I'm going to do is give it a go on my real piece of pegboard. Uh, one more tip. Typically, you'd give a piece two passes when you're spraying. But instead of doing one pass this way and a second pass the same way, if you're having to be, it's only human nature to spray and you might have a, a, a dry spot here. When you spray it again the same direction, you might have that same dry spot twice or three times. So you're better to spray it one direction then come around, spray the opposite direction, and it tends to fill in more evenly. And if it if this happened to be a piece of wood or a tabletop with grain, say, running this way, I would always do my first pass across the grain, and your final pass is always with the grain. And the reason for that is, say you do get a little tiny bit of a dry spot or a little problem, if it's running with the grain, it looks more natural than across the grain. If you have that little dry spot running across the grain, it really stands out. If it ends up being with the grain, it can just look like the wood itself. So we're going to trade places and I'm actually going to spray this piece of pegboard. Hold on. Okay. okay. Yep. So. Make sure you stop it off the edge. Okay. Lower. It's beautiful. Nice and even coat. Now the opposite direction. So I actually did better on the practice board than I did on this. I was too low to the board, so I got too much flow. It's a little bit thick. I didn't get drips though, so it probably will level out. Not bad. And um, you may have also noticed that I was back into swinging the paint cup. So that's something you have to keep in mind. It's not really a natural... Um, not a natural movement. Our yeah, it's not a natural movement. made to be movement. pendulums and they swing. Yeah. And so even a long table, if you don't walk with it, you're swinging like this and you're putting more paint here or clear coat than you are over here. So you really have to learn to move your arm perpendicular when you're spraying. So, so that's something with practice and with time that I'll probably learn. So but... you want this six inches away, about a six inch, five, six inch span, and you want this perpendicular, and you want to move your whole arm and come back forward. It just takes practice, so take some scrap wood, take, take some cardboard and set up a gun, 
and thin out some paint or whatever you want to spray and just practice your spraying. Practice on some old boards. You can so use that board, what do you think? Actually. Do I get a two star rating on my first project? I think out of five stars, we'll give you three for that spray job. Woohoo! You'll practice, you'll be a four in no time, and then okay. a five. Okay, I'll take, I'll take a three for now. So look at the beautiful spray job on that, as opposed to brushing or rolling. And that's just one coat, no primer. So if you spray your primer, give it a light sand with say 220 grit paper, and then a, a double pass of paint, you're done. And you've got a beautiful finish. Mm -hmm, it does look beautiful. No, no brush marks, no roller marks. And then we just clean up this cup gun because it's water-based paint, same as a roller. You would just use your tap water and uh, rinse it really well and then fill it two or three times and spray the water through it and make sure everything, everything's clean. And here's the outcome of my very first spray gun project. We'll have the full tutorial in our next post.